Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's a video tutorial on Unity! This is a continuation of the simple tutorial sequence uh, taking a look at creating a simple space game using C Sharp. In the previous video, we set up our scene. Now, I have saved my scene as game under my scenes folder, which is something I should have done in the previous video. But I forgot. So the scene has been saved out as game into scenes. And as a reminder, we have the scene set up such that the clear color on the camera has been changed to solid color and changed to black. So that way we have a black background to better mimic space. The goals for this video is to create the spaceship and get the asteroids placed. The asteroids are going to be easy. Those are just going to be spheres. Ship's going to be pretty easy too because we're just going to gray box it out. Gray boxing is a technique where you create approximations of what the geometry is. So that way you can get on with the development. It is a very useful technique. And it helps us focus on the important parts. Functionality and the actual gameplay, rather than getting hung up on trying to figure out what the visuals should be. So the first thing I am going to do for constructing this ship is I am going to create a cube. Which I am going to rename body. It is always a very good idea to keep your game objects named sensibly. Now, Unity creates game objects based on wherever the camera happens to be focusing. So if you've moved your scene around, like I have, it will create the cube at some really weird position. We want this created at 0, 0, 0, so I am going to reset the transform by clicking on the three little dots and selecting Reset. And then I need to refine the cube. There it is. Using right drag to look around. You can also double click on an object in the hierarchy to find it. Now, something very important to keep in mind when building game objects is where is forward? If I say this game object moves forward, what axis does that mean? And it means positive Z. So this little blue arrow coming out of the game object, that represents forward. Now, in this particular case, it's not going to matter. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind the difference between local and global. If you have your widget set to global, this blue forward will always point in the same direction as the global Z direction. Changing it to local means that this arrow will always point forward relative to what this object considers its forward, which matters once you start doing rotations and such, which we are not doing today. So whether you're on local or global doesn't matter for this particular video. Now, I don't want actually to have a cube here. So what I am going to do is I am going to change the Y to 0.5 to flatten it out a little bit and change the Z to 3. So that way I've got this the main body of the ship. Then I am going to create a cylinder. So coming back over to the hierarchy, right click, 3D object, cylinder. I am going to reset the cylinder's transform position. And this can be something, uh, I just accidentally did this, but uh, it is something that can sometimes confuse new users to Unity. If you misclick, it is possible to collapse a section. And so if that happens, like if all of a sudden your transform information disappears, 
Well, if you'll notice, the little arrow is now pointing to the right instead of pointing down. That tells me this section is collapsed. So just either click on the arrow or click on the title bar again, and it will uncollapse that particular component. Now for this, I am going to want to rotate it. So I'm going to press E to switch to my rotation tool and I'm use, going to use control drag. So I'm going to press and hold the control key and then use the left mouse button to drag it because that will snap it in 15 degree intervals, making it a lot easier to rotate it. Press W to switch back. And you can now see that my forward for the cylinder is pointing straight down, which is fine. It's the body that we're concerned about and the actual ship object, which we'll be creating here in a moment. So I am going to position this. Yeah, I think 0.65 works pretty good on that X. Maybe pull it out a little bit more. 0.9. There we go. Let's put it at 0.9. So my cylinder, which again, from the perspective of the ship body here, this would this is forward. This would be the right engine. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to change the position on the X to negative 0.9. So it's mirrored. And I will call this left engine. And now I have my completely original spaceship design. It doesn't look like anything else. I have no idea what you are talking about. Now we're not quite done with our ship design because currently everything exists in separate parts. So if I wanted to try to move this, I would have to move each part individually. That's not what I want. So I am going to create an empty game object. The keyboard shortcut for this, by the way, is control shift in. If you go to game object, you can see that create empty control shift in. That is a very useful keyboard shortcut to remember because you will be creating a lot of empty game objects. And I'm going to call this player ship. I'm going to reset the transform on this. This is a very critical step to make sure you reset the transform. And then I'm going to drag all of these parts onto the player ship so that way they become children objects. Now, if I select the top level parent object and I move it, the entire ship moves as one unit. And there we go. We now have a spaceship. Now, before I move on to the asteroids, I am going to adjust my camera because at the moment, this is what our camera view is. That's not what I want. What I want is a top-down view. So I'm going to use the scene to try to position the camera. It's like, how, how do I want this to look? Probably have it look straight down. And yeah, okay, maybe maybe a little bit more forward, but that looks pretty decent for the camera, at least for a good starting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my main camera, and then another very useful operation under the game object menu, and one that I recommend that you learn the keyboard shortcut for, is align with view. And what that does is it takes the currently selected game object in the hierarchy and aligns it to match the position and the rotation of the scene camera. So I'm going to do a control shift F 
and you can see that my main camera now has changed its viewpoint. Still got a few things to tidy up, uh, so I don't actually want any rotation on the Y or the Z, so I will zero those out. I want this camera looking straight down, so I'll change that rotation to 90. Uh, don't actually want any offset on the X, so that way the ship is nice and centered in the screen. And the Z, I need to adjust so that way the ship is down towards the bottom of the screen, which setting the Z value to 10, looks like that's going to work pretty good. And I'll leave the Y at 23. Now, something else that I need to do before I start placing the asteroids is I also need to change the aspect ratio. Typically speaking, most games are going to run in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is what a 1920 by 1080 monitor is, which is the overwhelming majority of monitors. Obviously, for a full game, you want to support different resolutions. But in this particular case, I'm going to make things a little bit easier on myself and just work with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Very important that I turn that on in my game view so that way I can actually see where the boundaries are of the play area. And now I am ready to add in asteroids. So I'm going to go to my hierarchy. I'm going to right click. 3D object, sphere, and I'm going to call this rock, and I'm going to immediately reset its transform, and there we go. I have a tiny little rock, tiny little asteroid. Now the big question becomes is how far off to the side do I need to put this? Because we got to think about gameplay here. I don't want the player to be able to go off the edges of my scene, right? So I'm going to want to put a nice super dense belt of asteroids on either side of the screen, plus a few asteroids scattered in the middle that the player has to dodge around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be in the game window mode. I'm going to make sure that I have my rock selected. And then I'm going to use put my mouse cursor over the X. You can see how it gets the two little arrows. Click and drag and drag it over. So there's my left. And unfortunately, due to perspective, oh, no, okay, actually perspective is working pretty good this time. If you have the camera angled instead of looking straight down at the scene, you can run into a perspective issue here. There we go. There's the rock on that side, which means if I duplicate it and move that over, there we go. That helps me know now where my limits are. Now, I'm going to be duplicating a bunch of these rocks. I don't necessarily want like 50 different rocks in my uh, hierarchy. That'll make my hierarchy very difficult to navigate through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. So control shift in. And I'm going to call this underscore sidewalls. Why the underscore? That is a personal notation of mine to let me know that this particular game object doesn't have any logic associated with it, but rather I'm using it as a type of folder. I'm using it to collect other game objects. So I am going to reset the transform. I am going to take my two existing rocks and move them into the sidewalls. And then what I can do is I can proceed to 
duplicate out series of rocks and I also need to figure out where is my limit see here Z yeah right about there okay and then I can just take all of those duplicate them again and there we go I got a nice dense asteroid field off to the side there And then what I can do is actually I'll yeah I'll leave that one over there as a marker. I'll just highlight all of these, duplicate them again, drag them over. We drag them over a little bit more. There we go. And that works. Now I've got this nice dense little asteroid field. Maybe tweak some of these a little bit so they're not quite so obviously in line. Probably should have done that earlier, but oh well. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So now I've got two super dense asteroid fields on either side of the ship that will kill the player, once we get our logic in, if they try to leave. Now I also don't want the player to be able to go back behind me. And so all I'm going to do for that is I'm still going to put it under sidewalls because this is a sidewall type of thing. I'm not going to put a bunch of rocks. And this is why, by the way, I wanted to put my sidewalls in its own little group because I've got, what is that? It's 56, so that's actually 57 game objects listed here that I can now just simply go boop and collapse down. Oh, and I've got one rogue rock that's outside of the sidewalls. Get back in there. Is I am going to create, in order to deal with the rear, is I am going to create a cube Again, I'm going to reset its transform position. I am going to press R to switch to the scale tool. I'm just going to scale it out so that it reaches past the boundaries of my field. Press W to switch to the move tool and then drag it back on the Z till it just disappears. Negative 5.5. Because what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that if our ship collides with anything, that's it. Game over. So if the player tries to back out and run away. That's it. Game over. Because we do not want to let the player leave the play space. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and, see, oh, actually, first, I'm going to rename my cube to back wall. I'm going to put that into the sidewalls category because, I mean, it basically is part of that general idea. I'm going to hit Control S to save my scene. Always very important to remember to save frequently. Because while Unity is reasonably stable, it does crash from time to time. And I'm all done. I've got everything set up. I don't have any of my gameplay asteroids placed yet. But I can do that once I actually get the movement of the ship in. So I'm going to get the movement of the ship in, get the collisions working... And then I'll figure out where I want to place my additional asteroids uh, to make the player navigate and move through the scene. Okay, if you have liked this video or you learned a couple of things, thumbs up would be appreciated. And if you didn't learn all that much or I need to do better next time, give me a thumbs down. It's right next to it. And with that, until the next video.